What's up YouTube, Brownie here, coming to you with another video, and today we're going to talk about the new update, and try to um, make sense of uh, the translations, but we're not, we're not going to make any kind of assumptions or anything, we're just, we're just going to kind of get an idea of what, what's going on. So, as you can see, I've already got Machman, um as high as I can get him, and it's pretty cool. Um, I'll say that for my first reaction. Um, and for those of you who haven't been able to upgrade a hero yet, um, what happens is you you come in here, you use your um, your five of these things here, the Divine Power Aura Gem, Aurora Gem, and it will unlock the skill here in the middle, and then it'll also allow you to choose um, from your first uh, things thing here. Um, I chose this one. The uh, well, initially I chose this one because I usually run Mockman with uh, around one active, and I figured you know, right away you get six layers of flying power. Pretty cool. Uh, but in my testing, at least with PvP, this has been way better. Um, it's it's allowed Mockman to do way more damage. Um, I did test in Flame Shine a little bit, and I was able to pull out, pull out a 2.2 E15 damage, um, and yeah, I, I was, I, I want to say I was surprised, but I wasn't, because um, everybody thinks that since you have to um, sublime Mach Man's last uh, sublimation here, that is going to like drastically reduce his damage or just make him so much worse. But honestly, it's it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I I got way more switches in my fight between offense and defense, like than I've ever seen before, and it, they were pretty quick switches. Like I was going from my offensive stance to my defensive stance, like every two two to three rounds at the latest and um yeah it was pretty cool now this was in flame shine so it it varies because for mock man to get into his offensive stance he needs to take attacks so results can vary depending on the opponent uh, or enemy that you're fighting um but yeah this this has been a pretty cool up uh, update so far the um what is it here these are the benefits you'll get so if you can kill boss four you'll be able to get you'll have all the resources you need to do the very first origin upgrade here and then you'll be able to level up to origin 100 here so um like when you do your breakthrough you you end up using these things scattered spirit vein shards and stellar shards to level your origin level and it's really does not cost much at all it's it, it was very cheap for this first um first upgrade or whatever you want to call it i'm sure it's going to get a lot more expensive as we progress through these but the first initial one really wasn't bad at all um it i i, I didn't keep track but it was about a hun a little over 150k stellar shards maybe and about the same for this scattered vein spirit vein stuff maybe it was a little maybe it was closer to 200k but regardless it, it wasn't bad um in perspective to all the other upgrades that need stellar shards in this game <laughs> so uh so yeah oh um and I gained about 360,000 fixed attack and then 3% attack. Uh, also got some HP in there. In total, I think it gave me around 500,000 attack because I went from two, po or I went from 19.6 million to about 20.1, one-ish million. So it was somewhere around the 500k, give or take a little bit. Uh, so it's a pretty decent update for or upgrade for attack and everything. Um, and yeah, uh, and also you get to have this cool, like, rainbow-looking <laughs> thing here. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I'm excited for <clears throat> is as soon as I get five more of these divine 
Aurora gem things, I'll be able to do the next upgrade, and the next upgrade lets you decide or choose between um, this one, um, additional damage equal to 8% of the target's max HP, <clears throat> uh, and then the, the stun. You, you can choose to give Machman a stun. I can't wait to test this and see how, just how it performs, if it actually does anything. Uh, this just, I don't know, it, this could be so cool to have on, on Machman. But, uh, yeah, and then, you, or you could choose Ascension Combat Skills, uh, deal 15% more damage. So, we'll see, we'll test them all out, see what, what works best, um, in what situations and everything. Um, also, I, uh, I got stuck on the Void Boss because cause I screwed up so bad. So I, I beat boss five, but I went in on difficulty six with the boss, and I, I had uh, my imprints all all wrong on Machman. Um, they were super offensive, so I had like no damage reduction and stuff, and I ended up like I, I got the boss down to like half HP, but I died so fast because he had <laughs> Machman had no damage reduction and. Uh, I pulled a berry gaming move, uh, doing berry things. So yeah, um, hopefully I can beat this boss tonight and get this 10k. That'll give me two more shard things or aura gems. And if I could possibly beat boss seven, <laughs> I kind of doubt I'll be able to. But um, I I think I can get boss six here. So we'll see. Um, what place am I in? 18th yeah I I, sh I know I, I probably could have beat this boss I just yeah I can't believe I messed that up anyway um, something else I wanted to point out uh, I was reading through Freya and oh wait you gotta go to what's it called here uh, not formations ah this and then this okay so I was looking at Freya and I was reading her destiny transition stuff or you know all the pivot things and so you uh, I'll break through to whatever it's called whatever what origin whatever this thing is called on her it's apparently it's Nirvana so I, I don't know anyway I'll get the the skill and um, then that'll give me this one and uh, that's all the, the normal, everybody's first one is, is always the, these three choices. Uh, but then, <clears throat> this is where it gets interesting. So you can give critical strike and crit damage to your team, um, or you can do the damage thing. But here, there's an additional 50% chance to inflict coil on the target for two rounds. Now, if you remember, I just read Mockman's, and it's a 50% chance to do stun. Now these translations are all screwed up. This coil, this could could possibly mean twine, um, or some other kind of CC, which could be really cool. Um, there's just uh, there's so many possibilities of cool and fun teams that I have floating in my head right now. That I just I want to test them all and see what they can do, but it's going to take so much time before we ever get this. Um, you know, before I can get all these heroes upgraded. So that's something to look forward to, to see if that is actually, that actually means twine or not. And, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, long story short, it, the Sublimian so Mach Man the whole way like that, it's not the end of the world. Um, he, he's actually, it, it, it makes it more fun, honestly, in my opinion. And, and makes it a little bit, I don't want to say more of a challenge, but because it's actually, it was pretty good when I was using it, and I enjoyed it a lot, but uh, <clears throat> it's it's something you have to account for now, because before we, we never accounted for the, the early switches, and now we're, it's, it's something you're going to have to think about when you're building a team around Mach Man and stuff. So anyway, we'll, we'll take a look at this Flame Shrine attack, and yeah, um... I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so we're gonna take in our our normal SE team that we would 
normally use, but we're just we put demon bells on everyone instead of using candy bars and stuff because it's flame shine. Uh, you, you can make basically make the perfect setup. <clears throat> anyway, some stuff to keep in mind about him actually being able to switch stances, um, well, switch from his offensive stance faster is that he gets way more counter attacks off because he'll he'll do an an active in his blue stance defensive stance and he will <clears throat> get two rounds of counters and then he usually when he switches into his offensive stance he's usually in that stance for like three four rounds or something but with the the tree fully sublimed he'll switch back to his blue stance within like two actives so he's almost always getting uh, counterattacks off. And his counterattacks when he's in his offensive stance, like because it carries over even though he switched stances, um, those counterattacks in offensive stance can be pretty strong. And, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. But as you can see, we've already made a few switches, and it's only around, around, well, around eight now. But um, the next time he... We'll just we'll keep track of the rounds the next time he switches. Let's see how uh, quick he's doing it. And keep in mind that Kamath is guaranteed to attack Mockman, so that's why he's also able to get out of his blue stance so fast. So round 10, he switched to offensive stance. Probably going to get a round 11 active and then switch to defense. Yeah, so round 11, we switched back to defense. Around 12, we'll get a defensive active, and we'll have counterattacks into round 13. Now we'll have counterattacks into round 14. And maybe we'll get a switch here. Yes, we got a switch. And so that was like two, two rounds to get a switch back to offense. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's pretty good. Uh, he, he I get way more offensive actives like this, sublimed like this than I did before. Um, so yeah, the, that damage right there speaks for itself. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you guys like this one. Please like and subscribe, and see you in the next one.